at what point are people going to stop paying hundreds and even thousands of dollars for these cards if there's so many available? What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Millennial Money. This episode will probably be by far the most controversial video I've ever made and it is on the possible Panini America sports card bubble. Of course you guys know I like doing my research on all my cards on all the investments I make. I felt like I owed you guys the research that I did and what it's come out to. If you're watching this episode it's probably because you're like me and you like collecting and investing in sports cards but I need you guys to pump the brakes for a little bit and just hear me out on what I'm seeing right now and the caution I'm going to be taking and the caution you should be taking right now with your sports cards. So the world of sports cards has taken a huge boom. So many people are into it right now. There's tons of Instagram handles, there's tons of YouTube channels, whether they talk about sports cards or literally just break open cases. Tons and tons of people are into sports cards right now. But we need to be paying attention to what is actually going on with the actual production of sports cards. If you guys aren't familiar with this, there was at one point about 30 years ago, um, what was called the junk wax era, where sports cards got really popular in the 80s and companies saw the popularity and they just started pumping and producing tons and tons of sports cards. Kids, adults were buying them and card values were going up in price. So more and more people started buying cards and eventually these companies just produced too much and sports cards just crashed. At least for the 2019 and on productions, I feel like something similar is going on. So on Instagram, there is a handle I follow called Swish Research. I'll put it right here. They pretty much, it's a pretty cool handle. Um, not a lot of followers yet, but they really do their research on pretty much a weekly basis of really popular sports cards. And a couple days ago, they did a post on how much money was invested into basketball cards on eBay for the year 2020. They compared LeBron, Jordan, Luca, Zion, Giannis. Something really crazy stuck out to me. They showed the amount of transactions that were done for each card. The Zion Williamson Panini Prism base card has gotten over 5,700 transactions just on eBay. And this is just the base raw card. So no color waves, no grading. Just the raw card has gotten over 5,700 transactions. That's crazy. Yes, probably a good majority of those could be flips, but when you compare that to the LeBron card that's only gotten 200 transactions, the Jordan Fleers, which the graded PSA 9 and the graded PSA 8 have combined gotten less than 250 transactions, and the Giannis Prism that's only gotten 320 transactions. Guys, this is a insane amount of transactions just for one raw card. So this got me really interested and really worried all at the same time. So I wanted to do a little bit more research. I went onto PSA's website and I looked at the population reporting for the Zion cards PSA has graded. Now again, we're still sticking with his base card. Guys, another crazy number. PSA alone has graded 5,100 of these. Just PSA, just that base card. So when you add up the number of transactions that eBay has done for Zion's raw card, which is over 5,000, and the amount of cards PSA has graded, which is over 5,000, we're looking at over 10,000 of those cards. Could some be intermingled? Maybe someone bought a raw card and had it sent to PSA. Maybe people are flipping these cards. Yes, of course but these numbers are staggering, guys. It's crazy. That's not even counting all the color waves and something else. That's not even counting all the other cards out there. He's got his collegiate cards. He's got the autograph cards. He's got the NBA hoop cards. He's got the Don Russ optics, the newer cards that have come out, Panini Revolution, Panini Mosaic, and I'm definitely not naming all of them. We could easily be talking 15, 20,000 Zion rookie cards out there. There's YouTube channels that are really popular out there and all they're doing are, they're still breaking open the 2019 Panini Prisms. 
There's more cards out there. This is really crazy, guys. Simple economics, and we're talking economics 101. When supply is low, demand goes up. So when there's not a lot of something, usually the demand for it will go up and that raises the price. But when supply rises, demand drops. So that means those cards are gonna be dropping in price. Another thing, Swish Research, I gotta say that slow because I keep messing it up. There's like the fifth take. Um, another thing they reported, the value of the Zion cards has dropped just a little over 8% two weeks in a row now. Now, could this be because unemployment? Could it be because there's no active games in the NBA? Possibly, but it probably has something to do with the fact that there's so many of these cards. Now, another thing I wanna note as well is just the crazy inflation of certain cards. We've got a lot of younger people into sports cards now. So of course, these younger people, they're not really looking at the older cards, they're looking at the younger players. Something like the, the Patrick Mahone's National Treasure card from 2017. This thing sold in February, of course, near the Super Bowl. This thing sold for $60,000. Now don't get me wrong, Patrick Mahomes is a really good player, but let's compare that to possibly the best quarterback in the NFL, the Tom Brady. His most expensive card that I found on eBay that sold was only 41,000. I'm saying only 41, that's a lot of money, but it's still $20,000 short of Patrick Mahomes. Then if we compare, like let's say a Drew Brees, his most expensive card that I found on eBay sold for $19,999. Now again, I'm not saying Patrick Mahomes isn't worthy of that much for his car to sell for, but when you compare other quarterbacks like Tom Brady and Drew Brees, who are for sure Hall of Famers, I mean, there, it's, such the, it's such a big gap in pricing for a newer player. I mean, the inflation right now is crazy. <laughs> So you might be asking yourself, what can I do? Let's say there is a sports card bubble. What am I gonna do? I would actually have you guys, when you're doing your research on your cards, like I always say, do your research on your cards. Um, use something like the PSA population report to try to find those cards that don't have a crazy production rate. Now it's not gonna give you all of the cards. It's gonna give you a good number to go off of when you're interested in buying a card. And following handles like Swish Research on Instagram that's super helpful, guys. I would have never thought to look into the values of these cards so much, and they do it so well. I'm gonna look and see if there's others for baseball, for football. I know someone is doing the research that I can't do, and they're gonna be able to give me valuable content. I don't wanna scare you guys out of buying sports cards, but it's definitely something to note. This year, Panini has made so many cards for so many players. We, they're pumping out cards left and right. If you follow Panini America on Instagram or you just go to their website, it's like every week or every other week there's a brand new card. Like how many Zion Williamson rookie cards can we have? How many do we need? At what point are people gonna stop paying hundreds and even thousands of dollars for these cards if there's so many available? It's definitely gonna be worth it for me as a sports card investor to try to find other cards that just don't have that crazy production rate as the new cards we're seeing now. But that's it guys, I hope this was super helpful. If you're a new sports card investor, I really hope this helped you out. I'd hate to see our sports card world go through another bubble, another crash, and I just wanna help you guys do better research and realize what's going on. Just because so many people are buying the Zion card doesn't mean you need to buy the Zion card. There's definitely other players out there that you can invest in. You just have to do your research properly. Follow Instagram accounts like Swish Research. Look up your cards on PSA Population Report. Probably Beckett has something like this. Probably SGC has something like this. I'm not sure, they most likely do. We do know that Panini, unless it's a very limited card, Panini's not gonna say how many cards they're producing, but it's pretty crazy right now how many cards they're producing, 
how many cards are already out there and how many cards they're still producing. I'm definitely gonna be looking for maybe not so many, not so much vintage cards, but I'm gonna be looking possibly into the earlier 2000s and seeing what I can invest into. But there you go, guys. If you like this video, give it a like. If you are not subscribed to Millennial Money, what are you doing? Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.